You've seen the while loop, and now it's time for another loop, the for loop. Have a look at the for loop's recipe here. This can be read as, for each var, a variable, in seek, a sequence, execute the expression. Make sense? Let's see how this actually works with an example. Remember about the fam list containing the heights of your family? Here it is again in the family.py script. Suppose that instead of a single printout of the entire list like this, we want to print out each element in the list separately. You could do this by doing four print calls with the correct subsetting operations. Instead of this repetitive and tedious approach, you can use a for loop. Let's wipe the print calls and start a for loop. For height in fam, followed by a colon, this means that I want to execute some code for each height in the fam list. Height is an arbitrary name here. I could just as well uh, call it h or something else. Inside the for loop, on every iteration, I print out the value of height. When you run this script, Python encounters the for loop and evaluates the seek element, fam, in this case. It sees that it's a list containing four elements. Then the actual iteration starts. In the first run, Python stores the first element, so the float, 1.73, in the variable height. Next, the expression print height is executed, printing out 1.73. In the second iteration, Python stores the second value of fam in height, being 1.68 now, and prints out height again. This process continues until all heights in fam have been iterated over, and we end up with four separate printouts. Great! In this solution, you don't have access to the index of the elements you're iterating over. Say that together with printing out the height, you also want to display the index in the list so that the printouts are converted to this. How should the for loop be built in this case? To achieve this, you can use enumerate. Let's update the for loop definition like this. Now, enumerate fam produces two values on each iteration, the index of the value and the value itself. Instead of a single variable height, you now write index comma height. Now, on each iteration, index will contain the index and height will contain the float. This means that we can now also update the statement inside the for loop with a more complicated print call. Notice that I had to convert the floats to strings with str so that you can add everything together. The printouts are exactly what we wanted. Nice. The for loop doesn't only work with lists. You can also create a for loop that iterates over every character in a string, family, for example, and stores it in C, one after the other. Inside the loop, the string C is capitalized and printed out. This time, six different printouts occur. That's enough on the for loop for now. In the next videos, I'll explain how you can use the for loop to iterate over other data structures that you learn about by now such as dictionaries and pandas data frames. But for now, let's get you coding and building some for loops of your very own.